Hello, friends. <clears throat> I have here a cornucopia of Robert M. Place goodness. Um, so this video is prompted by Kelly from The Truth and Story, who um, posted a walkthrough of Tower of the Sevenfold Mystery, but before she posted that walkthrough, there was a, a little thing in the Into the Wild Woods Facebook group where she used the Tower of the Sevenfold Mystery deck for a walkthrough, and I said, oh, I've been thinking about getting that deck. And she said, you're going to love it, and I ordered it immediately. Um, because um, I have... So this is my Robert M. Place collection. Um, and actually, I don't... You know, he, he's made a handful of decks over the years, so not pictured here is one of the great, you know, one of the great items on my wish list, which is the Buddha Tarot. Um, <clears throat> in part because... I don't know how much I've talked about this in the past. I think I have. But my therapist was... <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting a cold. And walking, racing through the cold without a jacket today was not wise. Um, my therapist was briefly a monk, a Buddhist monk. And he sort of turned me on to some brilliant writers, most primarily Thich Nhat Hanh and Pema Chodron. But, um, you know, there's just a lot in that teaching that resonated with me. I don't consider myself a Buddhist because I lack entirely the the commitment to <laughs> discipline that buddhism requires but it has taught me a lot about like its cosmology has affected my worldview so so you know there's that deck that i really want of course it's out of print um uh he also has the burning serpent oracle which he worked on with rachel pollock um uh so that's a lenormand deck there is the alchemical tarot which he released a fourth edition of um there's also the 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 Raziel Tarot, I believe it's called, um, which is a majors only deck. But it's with that again, he's working on with with Rachel Pollock. It sounds like they're working on a full seventy eight card deck, and I'm hoping they do because I'm really drawn to those majors. But I don't use majors only decks really, and while I love the art, um, and while I've always been interested, you know. I'm always interested in religion and religious history and cultural religions. And so when I was in, um, when I was an undergrad, I was, t I took a world religions class and actually wrote about the history of Judaism and the survival in essence of Judaism. And, um, so the, the Raziel Tarot is based on Jewish, Jewish, um, writings and thought and philosophies. So that, you know, it's, it's a world that's always interested me. So I do hope they release a full version of that. Um, the Alchemical Tarot he has, I haven't been super called to it just because I don't have a connection to alchemy in, in any way. Although I will say I do, I like a lot of the art in that deck. Um, I, I love his sort of uh, original version of the Lover's card in that deck, which is, um, you know, which is really the, the Lover's, did I say the Lover's? Sorry, I'm getting sick. The lovers, you know, in the middle of sex, essentially. Um, and that it was censored, you know, he had to recreate a new one for the original launch um, that was less uh, um, naughty, I guess. I don't find the image remotely naughty. I think it's really lovely. It's funny to me that, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a world where we can have a deck with the Ten of Swords... <laughs> You know, depicting the, the sort of bloody carcass of a human or an animal. Um, the lover's card in the middle of, you know, an act of sex is is the thing that needs to be censored. But again, that's just my worldview. So anyway, um, so the only tarot deck of Robert and Places that I had for a while, and I only got this within the last six months to a year, was the Vampire Tarot, which I love. I love it. Um... You know, I I wanted this so much that I accepted a copy without the book when I bid on it, and then it took um, it took Taroness, uh, Miss Melissa, as Kelly says, to um, trade with me to get the book. So I have that whole set. I love this deck. I love the art. I love everything about it. It is, as I said in a recent video, I think in the Tower Obsessed video, it's not a deck that I would use. I would just pull out and use for somebody unless they asked for it, um, because it is so themed that you know i just it 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 just um like to me it doesn't feel like uh, you know an all-arounder i would call it but 
I love it so much. But this was the only tower of his that I had. In fact, my first introduction to him was really this book, which I've talked many times about. I can never remember the actual title, but Tarot, History, Symbolism, and Divination. It came out, I think, in 2005. I, I grabbed it when I saw it. There was just something about it that called to me. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't agree with everything he has to say in the book, but I love a lot of what he has to say in the book. Um, and, you know, just because I don't agree with everything in it doesn't mean that, you know, we can't, we can't get along. In fact, I talked in, in the Tarot Obsessed video that a lot of the way I read now was supremely influenced by this book. Even though I'm not, and, and this book kind of focuses on the symbolism of Rider Waite Smith, but so much of it is dedicated to history and to divination. You know, the title is History, Symbolism, and Divination. You know, the symbolism is really only about a third of the book, so um, in that regard, I think um, even if you're not a, a reader of, of Waite Smith, there's a lot in here. And if you are, you're going to love it. Um, so I'm a big fan of this book. In fact, I just um, was just scanning it this morning, sort of rereading sections of it. But it's it's such a good one. Um, the only other deck I had of his until just recently was the Hermes Playing Card Oracle, which I really like. Um, it is essentially um, Lenormand with the additional cards uh, added, you know, to the 50, 52 pack of cards. Um, it has a little white book, but you don't really need much more than that. Um, I did, I did a little video about this, um, in another deck. I can't remember what, but, um, you've got the, the five through, uh, courts with the normal Lenormand symbolism, but then you've got the two, three, four, um, if I'm remembering correctly, that are, uh, ace, two, three, four. Or no, the aces were already in there. Sorry, it's it's confusing to me. Uh, but you've got the additional meanings. Um, you've got additional playing cards with, like the four of hearts is Cupid, the four of diamonds is Fortuna. But you still have the cross and the ring on their normal, the star on their normal correspondences. So um, it's very very much like the maybe Lenormand. I've talked about that before. Um, but the focus is on the playing card rather than. The, the image. So you still get the garden, but the playing card sort of takes precedence. Um, so it's a nice, it's a nice mix. Um, and I've done a, a couple readings with it. Um, I think I, I used it during my live readings video a few weeks ago. Um, and it worked pretty well, you know what I mean, for a, a, a deck that's sort of Lenormand inspired. I've been really struggling over the years, although, you know, I go back and forth and have my good moments and my bad moments, but um, I really do like this and will likely keep working with it. Um, so, but I was excited to to get a tarot deck of his that had kind of a, um, a general enough, you know, quality to it that um, I could use it for, you know, everyday readings that weren't, you know, necessarily themed. Um, so when I saw, and, and I knew about the Alchemical Tarot, I knew about this one too, but I just never really given a lot of look to it. I knew about the Alchemical Tarot, and it just, you know, it wasn't calling to me. You know how that is. It just doesn't sing out to you quite, you know. Um, not all decks do that. So, um, but this one did, uh, in part because it's, you know, the the... You know, Rubber in Place is very smart and has a lot of historical information and a lot of esoteric information at his disposal. Um, and that that may be one of the things about the Alchemical Tarot that sort of distanced me from it. Whereas a lot of that's here still, I don't find myself sort of distanced from it. Um, and I really do, you know, I first things first, you know, I mean, the quality of the cards... Are, are brilliant. It's the same card stock if you have the, the Hermes playing cards. It's the same card stock for both. It's really, it's it's glossy, but it's not offensively glossy, I guess. Um, the bat's the back. Um, it shuffles really nicely. It's, 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 you know, it's a deck that's going to last. It comes with this little white book, um, and there's a lot packed into it. Um, he is working on a new kind of tome, you know, an opus, so to speak, which will serve as the guidebook for this and for the alchemical tarot. And I think it's going to be sort of a um, an omnibus of several themes. So 
Um, that's coming soon. But in you know, in the meantime, he talks about the choices he made and why. And he also talks about the miners in this deck are very similar to the alchemical tarot miners. And so if you have the alchemical tarot and its book, they they go together. Um, so you know, it's it's, but it doesn't need you don't need it. You know what I mean? You're not gonna be at sea. Um, with the deck. Now, I did not put this back in order because I'm not going to do like a whole walkthrough of it because there are ones out there. And I try to sort of offer, you know, just my thoughts rather than like doing, um, aping anyone's show. You know, other people have done this. So I don't want to sort of like add my voice to the chorus by doing the same thing. I just sort of wanted to share with you my thoughts on it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The, I have to say of this scan, so I, there's a lot of scans of this deck on his website, and I've seen walkthroughs of this deck, but you really don't know how nice the coloring is and how good the deck feels to look at until you have it in front of you. So I would say that if you're on the fence about this deck, just know that it looks even sexier in person. Um, it really does. Um, Rob Brown Place is a genius writer and a very smart person, but he's also a genius artist. And what I love about his art style is that it feels a lot like the um, the woodcuts of old Marseille decks, but um, with a sort of fresh, you know, a fresh modern coloration and a fresh modern style. They're not rough and jagged, so they have a nice energy, a nice flow. So if you don't like woodcuts, you know, you're not going to be turned off by this. But to me, there's like a real nice connection between his art style and those and those older decks. And he certainly knows a lot about those older decks. Um, there is a bridge in this deck to the Rider Waite Smith, but it's not straight up Rider Waite Smith. Um, here you can see in the Four of Wands definitely a sense of celebration, um, but it's not, you know, it's not Pamela Coleman Smith. He's not really copying anything here. Um, when Robert M. Place makes a deck, he does his research on every card. Um, and he puts a lot of thought into what he's doing. Um, and for that reason alone, you know, it's worth just studying the images. But um, this, you know, it's, it's, there's a real beauty to it. Um, so, um, you know, I'm just going to sort of ramble as I talk. Um, so those were all minors. Here's a trump. This is justice. So again, you're not getting Marseille or Rider Waite Smith here. You've got a guy on a horse, a knight. Um, and you've got the spirit of, or the essence of reason, um, giving her, the, giving the knight his, her sword. So there's a lot to do in the, in the Trump, certainly, with the idea of reason, will, and appetite. Um, and, and that's a really interesting concept, because when you think about it, a lot of our lives are really a battle between those three elements, you know what I mean? Even just trying to choose what to, to have for dinner. You know, reason will tell us to eat smart, appetite will tell us to eat big, and it's willpower that, you know, it's will that keeps us, or doesn't keep us on the on the straight and narrow. Um, so from that standpoint, it makes sense. The pages in this deck are ladies rather than pages. Uh, so it's lady, knight, king, and queen. Um, I really do like, I really like, you know, I always feel like I have to defend myself when I say I'm not reading a lot with Rider Waite Smith decks right now because I don't want to hurt or offend anyone who does because it's not I again I there's nothing wrong with it it's it's how I learned it's what I love it's just that that's not the path that I'm on right now and so when I'm looking for decks what I'm looking for are things that sort of add a different color to the the party so to speak you know they're bringing a different dish to the party so I like what he's changed from the uh, the the Rider Wright Smith, um, you know, for example, this four fours to me have a lot to do with stability, um, foundation, and this you know I mean this really looks like foundation and stability, you know he's standing on very solid earth he's very solid. Uh, the other side of the coin for me with fours is conservatism, um, you know, and so I I also get a sense here of this idea of like you know, uh, the very conservative concept of, you know, lifting yourself up by your bootstraps. We have this man who, you know, dressed in very little out there shoveling rocks, essentially, um, trying to get the money. Um, you know, there is a conservatism to that um, because 
the effort, you know, for four coins is, is kind of, you know, it's kind of large. So I think, you know, there's, there's something really fascinating about, and I don't think that that has anything to do with what his, <laughs> you know, what his, uh, uh, instincts were in making it but to me you know because four is about foundation but also about conservatism that's the shadow aspect that makes sense to me this is one of my favorite wheel of fortune cards ever ever this is fortuna um you've got the signs of the zodiac around um prudence is what he says in the little white book it's just you know it's so nice to not see the you know the the, the traditional wheel this is such a fresh smart interpretation uh, here's the Ace of Cups. Um, and then you have some very simple, which is fine with me, cards, like the Two of Swords. Love the Owl. I really wish he would do a straight-up Marseille. You know, I think that would be so much fun. Probably not fun for him as an artist, but um, the court cards, the kings have the, the card suit on their shields. Um, here's Hermes as the Magician. I really like this card a lot. His art is just so um, riveting. I find it so captivating that you just, you know, I haven't used this deck a lot because since I got it, I've really been focused on working with the, in the Wildwood. Um, but I think this deck is going to get a lot of use in December uh, and in the coming weeks because I just feel so drawn to stare at these images. Like, they, they're just so seductive. Um, here's the Ten of Swords. So, again, a nod to Rider Waite Smith. You get. You get the sense. I know I, I hate when people do walkthroughs, and I wasn't even planning on going through every card. I know that people really hate it when the cards aren't in order. But there's just so much to talk about, so deal with it. <laughs> um, so here's the here's the lover's card, which is Cupid. And again, here we get will, appetite, and fidelity. So rather than reason, it's fidelity. But, you know, you've got someone who has who has to choose between sort of like the, the reasonable choice that's going to get, you know, a, a, a life of, of, of um, balance and the sort of lustier choice. Um, but the dog is represented, uh, the, the fidelity is represented by the dog, which of course makes sense, right? Because dogs represent loyalty. And there's love. Um, so... I'm going to not talk about every card, um, just, you know, here's a very pippish card, which I really like. Um, again, there's like a lot of energy around the Two of Wands, but it's not the traditional Two of Wands, and that's nice for me, because, you know, when I think about the Two of Wands, uh, you know, twos are sort of this duality or coming together, this pull, this attraction, or this polarity, this pushing apart, you know, and, that, and then the fire is about passion. So there's like a real sexual energy to the Two of Wands in many ways, and you kind of get that in this picture. Um, so a very non-traditional Five of Wands, again, which I really like, because I feel like he's giving me enough, like similar to the Wild Unknown in many images, it's like you're giving me enough that I have something to like add layers to what I'm already doing, but I'm not distracted by um, a fight, which you know is traditionally in that card. Um, so, but then here we get the Five of Pentacles, which is very much like, um, the Rider Waite Smith. This is, I love this image too, because it's the cover of, um, the Tarot History Symbolism Divination. Um, so it's nice to see that this became a card in his deck. Um, this reminds me a lot, for some reason, of the Nigel Jackson Tarot, which I sold many years ago and, and wrestled with whether or not to sell it because I liked it. But um, it's the Empress. Um, this is the Ace of Wands. Uh, here's the Sun. It's Apollo. Um, so we get a, a, again in like a very fresh interpretation of the Sun. Uh, and in the Little White Book, he actually talks about. This, I think this is some sort of, like, in one of the cards, the sun is marrying the moon. I can't remember which one it is. I'll see if I can remember. Um, this is the Fool, Stultitia. It's the Eight of Swords. Again, has a very Ryder Smith feel to it. The Four of Swords, again, you know, you sort of have a sense of rest and peace there, but 
not rest in peace, but rest and peace there. Um, but again, there's a there's a there's a light there's a light touch to it, so that you you know again I talked about fours meaning foundation and stability. You you can also see a, a person who's very stable, mentally stable in this. You know, you don't see erraticism, you don't see panic, you see stability, you see foundation, you see. Um, uh, clarity of thought and you know an evenness but again you could also read conservative thinking into this because she's shut out uh there's the fool oh, i'm sorry the the hanged man is the traitor which is very classic uh his judgment prudence is the world i believe yes this is the world love this It's a really cool one too. It's beautiful. I mean, it's just a beautiful deck. Uh, his art is just unlike anything else. You know, when you see this art, you immediately know it's his. Um, and I think it's just stunning um, and fresh, but you know, based in very classical, you know, mystery traditions. Here's Satan, you know? So we've got unreason, will, and appetite. And so it's sort of like the unreasonable laziness, so like your will and your appetite are just sort of completely apathetic. Totally, totally interesting. This I thought was the back of the card at first, but it's it's the Ace of Pentacles, which I love. Um, the Four of Cups with the elephant balancing on them is really fascinating. Um, it's the same image, actually, as the alchemical tarot. Um, what does he say? I mean, he doesn't give you a whole lot in the Little White Book about them. Um, standing on four cups in a fortress represents a conservative position or situation that is strong but stuck and not moving. So it's interesting. You know, I mean, there's like a, you know, I talked about conservatism in the other two fours that I looked at. Um... You know, and you could look at this card in two ways. You know, it's not just a conservative thing. When we're looking at the Four of Cups, I'm thinking you're in an emotionally stable place or you're working with, a, you know, a foundation of thoughtful emotions or you have conservative feeling, you know, you're, you're, um, you're being regressive in your thinking, your emotions, or you're trying to apply a structure to your emotions that, that it doesn't fit anymore. So, you know, I like that he has conservatism in his his meaning. It's, um, death, Morta, which is beautiful. I love this, just this tree with one leaf falling off. And this, this sort of beautiful, you know, motion of the hand here. Stunning. The, you know, the, the men in this deck seem to be very built, so good for them. This is temperance. It's beautiful. He talks in the Little White Book about how she's both the tree and the fire. And the water that she's pouring on the fire tempers it, but doesn't ever put it out because the fire is part of her. So I think that's beautiful. The Hierophant. So I guess I am doing a whole walkthrough of this, which I did not intend to do. The Psyche is the chariot, so we have reason, will, and appetite. So she's bringing those things together. The Emperor, this great beard, Two of Cups, the Star, beautiful, Strength is beautiful, or like posse of gentle looking animals. Love this one too. Look at all the fruit and you know, the money in his bat in his in his boat. Um, so he's either going off to sell this stuff and make more money, or he's coming back with, you know, the bounty of his labor. It's just really cool. So I think this is a stunning deck. I really love it, and I'm really excited to work with it more love, this hermit. Um, he doesn't have a name because it stands for, si you know, solitude and silence. Um, the tower is great. The moon is beautiful. So I think that this is beautiful. I really, really am excited to work with it. Um, you know, just in terms of a working deck, it, it shuffles really nicely. Uh, it's standard tarot size. The cardstock is really durable, but it's not so stiff that you can't ruffle shuffle it. Um, 
so it feels really nice. It, of course, overhand shuffles. It's not a sticky gloss, you know what I mean? So it's a really nice, um, it's a really, you know, he really thought about the paper he was using. The backs are not reversible, but if you've read his books, you know he doesn't read reversals. What Robert M. Place does, uh, and this was a big influence on me, is that he reads everything in threes. So um, you would always read three cards in one position. So, um, you know, if this were a past, present, future reading, the past would be these three cards. So you'd have the Emperor, Justice, and, and the Chariot. Um, so you would read this as one meaning. And then, you know, if I were going to look at present, I would look at these three cards together. And again, I would detect one meaning, not three separate things. I would say, you know, we have um, judgment, the three of pentacles, and the four of wands. So what I would do as a reader is work to create um, a, a, a unified message. So uh, I've talked about this a lot in the past, you know, so I won't go into a lot of depth about it, but, you know, we have awakening, we have judgment, awakening to the growing practicality of our work, um, but still resting on the foundation of the passion for what we love doing. So, you know, in the present, what we're doing is waking up to the fact that we have to make money and we have to, like, grow our finances, but we're still resting on the, um, on the passion, the foundation of passion that we had for the work that we do. So even though we're now in a position where we realize we need to make money out of doing it, we need to find ways to grow our finances, it's still resting on the passion that we once had. So that's where we are now. And then, you know, in the future, um, we would do that again, you know? So what is this? So the one thing, I, the one downside about this deck is that the car, the pips are not numbered. And so you do have to count. Uh, and it's not, you know, it's not super easy right out of the gate. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the nine of wands. So nine for me is about the push um, to get over the hill or the um, anxiety that comes from feeling like you may not get there. Uh, here's the six of coins. Uh, six is about beauty and, and um, connection and harmony. And then we have the empress. So we have this kind of flare of passion as we push to get to the final row. Um, and that makes us, you know, really see the beauty in being practical, you know. So the passion really flares up uh, as we push to get the project done. The um, practicality also starts to feel good. And that creates a fertile ground for future projects. So anyway, you know what I mean? Like we get one answer out of the three. So that's how he reads. He doesn't use reversals. In his book, in Tarot, History, Symbolism, and Divination, he actually talks about when you're thinking about card combinations and the possible, you know, he says people read reversals in part to double the number of potential meanings of a card. He says, but if you use three cards in the space of one, you actually triple the potential meanings. Um, and that really had a profound effect on me. So that when I do read now, you know, I've talked about this in the past, but my, my go-to spread generally is nine. You know, so if I'm going to do any kind of spread at all, I will generally do nine because I can do um, three rows of three and three columns of three uh, to all in service of one question, which to me is a pretty powerful thing. You've seen me do this many times if you've watched my videos ever, but you know what I mean? So um, I'll, uh, I think, again, this came from Kelly. Um, you know, you, you look at the center card and the first card to give you, you know, the overall theme of the message. So we've got the six of pentacles here. Oh, the nine, I'm sorry, the nine, right? Yeah, <laughs> I can't think. Um, yeah, three, three, and three is nine. Gosh, I'm so tired. And the uh, wheel of fortune. So we've got sort of, um, we've got Nine of Pentacles is about the push financially, sort of a financial push to get to the end. You know, our, our financial, um, uh, long-term financial goals are really right now at the, the whims of fate. So that's the theme of my reading. And now I read the rows and columns to explore why and how or to validate or, um, you know, diminish that, that overall message. Um, you know, so in this case, I would say, like, the, the things that are out of our control are really strong, and we feel, at least mentally, really um, bound by that. But um, eight is also about hard work, 
so the eight of swords here is you know we feel bound by the amount of like mental energy we need to give to the fact that so much of our finances are out of our control and then in this row we have the king of wands the nine of pence and the uh the four of swords so interesting we've got the the eight of swords reduces to the four of swords here um so this this work is resting on a really stable base of thought so that's a nice thing um now um this could suggest someone who's a guide, you know, um, or it could suggest an element of this person, but you know, their, um, their king of wands quality, their, their mature passion, their leadership ability can give them the push to return to a stable mental state that allows them to think smartly, you know, and then, so I would keep going and making, you know, and you can do the crosses and all of that. But, um, so combinations of three are another Robert M. Place lesson. Um, and I'm sort of looking forward to working with his deck in that way because um, he does not use reversals. I do, you know, I, I, I generally, as I've talked about many times, I don't use reversals with um, pictorial decks, which this one really is. Uh, with Marseille or Pip decks, I generally do use reversals, but I'm more and more using reversals for the core cards just to give me a sense of whether it's the person or someone in their life. Um, so I would, I will probably use reversals with that just because it really helps me understand who I'm looking at when I'm looking at the core cards. Um, but you know, I think it's going to be fun to, to return to his book and then also just return to the methods I learned from him with a deck created by him. So anyway, this is the beautiful, um, um, Tower of the Sevenfold Mystery, which I was not going to do a walkthrough of, but did. And just some general thoughts on the genius of Robert M. Place. And, you know, if you're thinking about getting this deck, I really do recommend it. I think it's it's really breathtaking. And it's just a fun, fresh, you know, new voice. Not new, I mean, it's been around. But it's, you know, to my collection, it's a, it's a new voice, to, you know, to the to the choir. Um, so, you know, I would put this in the same category as things like the Santa Morte, Wild Unknown, um... Oh gosh, you know, um, the I can't think of all the decks, but you know, the Animal Totem deck that have um, looked at the tarot as a whole and found a new um, a new melody within the 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 symphony, so to speak. So anyway, <laughs> I'm exhausted. And I'm rambling. I hope this was interesting, and uh, be well and take care.